The Fall was an atmospheric sci-fi horror adventure developed by Over the Moon Games in 2014. The protagonist, an AI named Arid, controls a spacesuit with an unconscious dying pilot inside. It was an instant classic. The unsettling environments littered with demolished and forgotten androids provided a really dark atmosphere which paired beautifully with some of the sharpest writing I've seen in video games. And ever since playing through The Fall, I've been highly anticipating its sequel. Nearly four years later, and here we are with The Fall Part 2, Unbound. But does it live up to the legacy of its predecessor? Let's find out. Target aligned. The Fall 2 picks up right where the first game ended. Like, exactly where it ended. Arid has been ripped out of her suit and now exists as a program traveling through a global network. And with a new Prime Directive, Arid sets off on a journey to get her body back and cure herself of the virus that's infecting her consciousness. On her quest to find the user who's responsible for this infection, you'll find yourself sharing bodies with several other AI, each with their own motivations and issues for you to either work around or exploit in order to accomplish your mission. I actually really like this premise. The game is at its best when you're learning more about these characters, and each provides a new and interesting take on what it's like to be an android with little to no free will. You'll meet a butler who sees the world objectively, spending each day following his protocol of serving these masters in spite of them being dead for god knows how long. It's the perfect blend of horror, tragedy, and a little bit of dark humor. Your master is not to be disturbed. You'll also meet an AI known as The One who has developed more of a self-serving point of view, in which he differentiates himself from the hive mind he's a part of by constantly reminding himself and everyone else that he is unique. Even if, ultimately, maybe he isn't. I require your assistance. I am distinct. Get out. I am alone. Get out. You are not alone. Get out! And finally, a companion bot who sees the world only from the perspective of making others feel good, in spite of what that might mean for her own well-being. Your uniform is neither sufficient for combat protection nor labor. What is your purpose? I make people happy. How? <laughs> However is needed. I'm a universal companion, designed for the pleasure of others. That is not useful. Something that surprised me about The Fall Part 2 was that visually this game feels like a bit of a downgrade from the first, particularly in the global network areas. The big bright backgrounds and simple platforms gave the game an amateur vibe that I never really got in the original. A lot of these areas look like a Super Smash Bros. level without any textures on them. It just doesn't look finished. In fact, upon finishing Part 2, I booted up the original to make sure I wasn't remembering it wrong, and sure enough, it looked great. And perhaps I'm technically wrong here, and The Fall 2 is far more detailed than the first if you look at the individual assets side by side. But at the end of the day, I think that Part 1 used darkness and silhouettes to give the game a lot of atmosphere that, in some places, is totally lost in the sequel. But that's not through the entire game. I think that all of The One's areas are an exception to this. These environments are detailed and lit really impressively, and they use some nice particle effects to add a lot of texture and really work to set the mood. It's just that I wish the game looked this good all the time. And while the writing in The Fall Part 2 is more hit than miss, some characters or situations just go on and on and I don't feel like I'm getting much out of it. It doesn't help that when you're totally stumped about what you're supposed to do next, you'll find yourself resorting to that age-old solution of trying every item you have on everything that you can interact with, hoping to stumble onto the solution. And all too often, every time you do this, you'll have to listen to the same dialogue again and again and again. I feel the anger. Nothing? I feel the happiness. Nothing? I feel the desire. Nothing? The Fall Part 2 really tried to up the ante with its action sequences this time around. There's these new timing-based brawler segments, and I really enjoyed them, but the team seems to have milked this for all it's worth, squeezing a fight scene into just about every section they could find an excuse to. It was cool the first couple of times, but by the end of the game, it's lost its sheen. And then there's the more complex, but certainly less entertaining, 2D shooter combat. Not only do these segments look like a clunky and awkward Metroid game, but they play just as bad, if, if not worse. If you shoot too much, you're gonna have to wait for your energy to recharge, which unfortunately takes your ability to jump away with it, ensuring that you get hit. 
These encounters are never too challenging, which keeps them from ever getting frustrating, but they're certainly not fun either. Literally every time that one would start, I would sigh, plow through it, and then carry on. That being said, the game does ask whether or not you want to play combat sections, and I would highly recommend that you select no. Luckily, you aren't locked into your choice either way and can turn it on or off at any time. That was a good call. So I've covered what doesn't work for me in the Fall 2, but what about the things that do? I'll just say that when you've got a clear understanding of the situation, the character motivations, and what exactly you're trying to accomplish, that's when the game truly shines. Forcing Arid to share a body with other AIs and learning about them and manipulating the way that they see the world in order to get what she wants was a brilliant idea. Especially in the final act, when you've put in the work to understand each of these characters and are now actively swapping not only between them, but also their points of view. More of this, please. This is what The Fall 2 needed to lean into. There's lots to love in this game, it just happens to be surrounded by a whole lot of jank that either wasn't in the original game or it was cleverly hidden. So there you have it. After genuinely loving the first game, I'd be lying to you if I told you that The Fall 2 wasn't a disappointment. I do wonder if the team at Over the Moon simply bit off more than they could chew with this game, and maybe its scope was beyond their resources. Either way, I did enjoy a lot of it, and once again I'm intrigued by the ending and will be anticipating Part 3 whenever it does come. Until then, I'm giving The Fall Part 2 Unbound a 3.5 out of 5.